fucking a man like you think about like you see things happening in the world sometimes and you're like this could be it you know what i mean <laughs> man i you're on a fast track to becoming our grandpa the end of the world is terrifying you're listening to the hard point with one punch dad and code roams Welcome back to the Hard Point episode number 22, Emmett Smith. I guessed it this week. My name is John, I go by One Punch Dad online. My name is Cody, I go by Code Roams. And this is it, baby. Deuce Deuce, episode 22. Big, the big 2-2, two, two. double deuces, double, double D's, baby. Double duce. Uh I have had a terrible day. <laughs> We've already talked about it. I just want to come right out of the gate and say, today weren't it, man. Today was sorry. It was sorry as hell, but I'm happy as hell to be here. This is my happy zone. Yeah. You know, sometimes Fridays be like that. Like, most of the time they're good. Yeah. But I think you go into a Friday expecting it to be good. So when you're approaching that like 11 o'clock, 1130 and everything is going fine, your guard's totally down. Yeah, exactly. And then you get walloped aside the head with some bullshit. Yeah. And you just weren't ready for it. You didn't, you weren't able to brace for impact. Friday is normally nine out of 10 Fridays are good days for me, but it also runs the highest risk of something huge being dumped into my lap at the 11th hour and someone saying yep. we need this today because we're we, it's got to be done by the by the weekend we can't we cannot you know it's normally never that serious but there's always someone who's like just urgent urgent this has right, to happen right. now and it's like man you had monday through thursday i was gonna say where was this the previous four days of the work week where were you on you know Friday and and I don't know how it is around your office, but people are shutting down for the week on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah. R- realistically, and I feel like this is true about most of the business world, the corporate world, whatever. If you don't get what you really need done on a Friday by eleven o'clock, it's yeah. happening Monday. <laughs> Just be asking real. somebody to take down a, or, or, or accomplish a big task. Past noon on Friday is equivalent to going into a restaurant one minute before they close and ordering the menu. Yeah, ordering you just, a, a you just, souffle or something that takes two hours to make. Yeah, you just Absolutely. you don't do it. No. You don't and the other thing, like I feel like with Mondays you kind of know. Like I have a case of the Mondays just about every Monday. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm aware of that. I'm ready for it. It's no big deal. When it's Friday and you got your big toe hovering over the finish line, you're there. You're there. You remember that SpongeBob? <laughs> remember that SpongeBob where he's learning to drive and he's like big toe and his toe yeah. shoots out the sock and then yeah. the, you're you're over the finish line. You're right there. Yeah. I And so it's like it's it's that much more tough, you know, when you're so close. It is. So Monday, you made an interesting point, too, because Mondays for me are almost a burner day. Like, I'm there. I'm at my desk. (laughs) Right. But I'm probably at the most, I'm just staging my week. Like, realistically, Monday I come in and I'm like, what do I need to get done? What has to happen today? Which normally, thankfully, I think everyone in my line of work is kind of similarly, like, oriented. Because Mondays are typically kind of slow. Yeah. So I can take it that whole day and just be like, what do I got to do between now and 11 o'clock on Friday? Sure. Uh, because anything around that's just no good. Mm-hmm. So. How would you rather? Okay. Would you rather Mondays be fucking insane, hectic, just a crazy day, but you are guaranteed to like Friday's chill. You're not doing shit. You know that. Or would you rather go the other way? The other way, like Monday's chill. You ease into it. But you're ramping up to a banger every Friday. I so I think my natural rhythm, honestly, is to peak Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Wednesday and Thursday for me are classically, and it's not even that there's more to get done, but that is like 
It's like, you know, Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man, how he's like when he's first learning how to like be Spider-Man and he's on the <laughs> rooftops, yeah. like he has to get a running start, leap and jump and go a little faster, jump a little farther sure. each time. Wednesday, Thursday is when I'm doing full blown, like <laughs> arms waving, like, right. Like I'm rocking and rolling by Wednesday because I had Monday and probably some of Tuesday to get some to ramp up. going yeah. to stage up those tasks. So realistically, if you want me on my best like work performance, let's do it Wednesday or Thursday because the mind is working, the yep. body feels good. You know, I'm I, a rest day is not soon and it's not recent, so I'm yeah I'm in that yeah. on zone. Like that's when the right. engines are just like the pistons <laughs> are pumping, baby. Wednesday, Thursday are like my I like honestly. If they wanted to trick me into being full blown productive all the time, just jump in my brain and tell my body that it's perpetually Wednesday and Thursday over and over again. Right. Yeah. Huh? Yep. I'm sorry that happened to you, man. <laughs> it's fine. It's like I said, pretty uncomfortable. We're gonna turn it around right here. Yeah. This is where we do the flip. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm happy. I'm much happier where I'm at right now in this moment. How are you this week, man? Man, got a busy weekend. Got a big yeah. weekend. This is the, not the, our baby shower oh is boy. on Sunday. Oh, boy. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're having a lot of friends and family down. Um, my sister's coming down who lives in Albuquerque. Oh, cool. Y'all are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll be here. Um, Y'all are coming down. Yep. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of people over. And the baby shower itself is like girls only right. so me and the boys we're gonna go have some eat have some drinks yeah yeah we're gonna do what we do <laughs> we're right gonna do, we're gonna do guy stuff yeah yeah, yeah yeah um yeah so i'm really excited for that uh it's been pretty relatively easy on me like leading up to it i think my wife is a little stressed just knowing we get you know what i won't lump her into this but i think she's getting it a little bit with this i get hosting anxiety yeah big time man like oh yeah Big we talk, time. We talked about this at length on our uh, Thanksgiving episode. I think it was okay. episode three. Yeah. It was a while ago. Yeah. But absolutely. Like when you have a planned, like not like it's Wednesday and we're inviting a couple, uh, you know, a couple people over. Sure. On Friday. Over for the week. Yeah. Like this, you know, we've known about the baby shower for several weeks out. So this is like weeks, maybe even months in the making. Big thing, you know, very organized. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that is a stressful event. 100%. It's the opposite of like a low threat get together. Like yeah. stakes are high. And I feel like the longer that you've planned something and the more that, you you know, it's a baby shower and everybody come and people are traveling in and I don't know, man, I, it's all going to be okay. But leading up sure. to it, I'm just like, uh, and I'm not even going to be here. So I can't imagine <laughs> how. Have you ever been to a baby feels. shower before? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So funny enough, we have, including ours. So I guess I shouldn't include ours. Three baby showers to attend in April. Oh, wow. Every weekend. I think we're going to try and get out of at least one of them. Sh shower um, season, maybe. Yep, yep. And then I went to one probably three, two or three months ago. They're all her, they're all her friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Oh, and uh, my buddy Juwan. We went to his. It was like a, a couple months ago. So right, yeah, I, yeah. I'm officially in like baby season in my life. Yeah. Where everybody, we know like more couples than we could count on one hand who are pregnant right now or just had a baby. Like it, it, a lot of babies flying around right now. So <laughs> definitely, definitely in that, <laughs> I'm definitely in that era of my life. Just babies everywhere I look, including as my a, own. As a spring baby myself, it's that time of year, man. Baby showers are really interesting. It's funny you talked about like how stressful and kind of like like you know high risk that they feel because it's literally a party, generally most of the time thrown for you, but mm -hmm. sometimes you throw it yourself. Right. But it's a party. Yeah. It's not your birthday, but everyone's bringing you gifts that will ultimately <laughs> yeah. be for another person. Yes. Um, yes. But it's you know. On the bright side, it is nice. I will say it's a good way to get a good, like, foundational stockpile of baby items. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, 
I, is there anything like specific like i know you guys have like a registry and all that stuff but there is there anything specific that you as a as an incoming dad are like i really hope we get that uh these, the one maybe. thing yeah one thing that i'm really looking forward to so they make um and this surely could have been around when when you were when your kids were littler right um but it's like a keurig but for baby formula oh wow like you don't have to make it like they just okay okay so it must be a little bit newer so we asked for it i think we got it i'm not totally sure um but the idea of like we we have friends who have that and they're like it's the most game changer awesome thing ever like you don't have to make anything you just hit a button set the cup there and you're good to go you know so i'm all about convenience that sounds yeah. quite convenient to me. Uh, Dude, it, that sounds I, pretty cool. I tell you, because you got you got some late nights ahead of you, man. It, <laughs> a, a baby is like imagine you're playing a game. You play a game and you have like carry weight. Having a baby is like playing a role playing game where you are consistently three ninety nine <laughs> out of four hundred at all times. Your carry weight is almost maxed out, <laughs> and so. With that, and it's like, I need some milk. Mm-hmm. You're over in comfort. Mm-hmm. You can no longer fast travel. So being able to take some of the work out of, like, get some fucking milk. <laughs> right, yeah. That's yeah. that's money okay. in your pocket right there. Did you ever, another thing I'm, uh, our, our buddy had one of these. He showed us. But it's like where you strap the baby to your chest so you can do oh. things. Did you have oh. that? Let me tell you, man, because I, you know, back when our, our firstborn came around, that was kind of new, maybe not new. I, you know, like native people have been wearing their babies for a long time, but it was new, I think. Sure. And I like to consider myself a trendsetter here. Just saying, I kind of said that like to, I like to consider myself a trendsetter. <laughs> Other people weren't doing it before I was doing it. Uh, I was the first. I was, I was the, first. the first one, the very first one. Uh, I I loved wearing the babies, man. We had okay. We had the stuff. The one you see on TV is like the baby Bjorn a lot, which is like yeah. very like aerodynamic kind of space age looking. But my wife sure. got us into these more kind of homeopathic hippie looking ones. I didn't care. I liked wearing the baby. I could wear the baby and like do housework. We could go to the yeah. grocery store. Nine yeah. times out of ten, you put a baby in that thing and get to moving around. That baby's going to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And when they're small enough, it's not adding a whole lot of weight to you. You know, no. yeah, you, can, you can rock the baby carrier because you can wear it. The good ones, you can wear it front or on the back and yes. you get good at it. You can load that baby in there by yourself. You don't need like a, okay, you know, an assistant. See, that's going to take some skill because I watched my buddy put his like newborn. It, it, it was one that looked more like. It just looked like a scarf that was tangled up and you got to yeah. put your, you know, through certain ways and. I man, it, it it freaks me out trying to like do that by myself. Make sure like she's in the right hole, because I feel like I'm gonna get her here, and then she's just gonna fall through the bottom of it. Let me. So th- here's the cheat, because I had one. It was literally like uh, I'm trying to explain it, but it had two kind of arm straps, the mm-hmm. the pouch right where the baby goes, and then a waist sure. buckle that would okay. buckle buckle at the back. The trick yeah. is take that thing, put it on the bed next to you. Take baby, lay mm-hmm. them against your chest, their head and chest facing in, lay sure. back, lay flat on the bed, and then put uh-huh. that thing over you and then kind of put it uh, on. And that okay. way, baby is just kind of like <laughs> just chilling. Going. Yep. And you stand up and you're just wearing a baby. You're locked and loaded, man. Okay. Well, that's going to be, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the other thing I'm kind of looking forward to, so my wife sent me this TikTok video of this guy and he was showing dads, like, hey, Here's different ways you can hold your baby. And you had like easy level and then you had like hard mode. And it was one that he called the sloth. And it's where you just like have them on your forearm and like their legs are dangling, arms and then their heads just kind of side to the side. Yep. And yep. he's like, see, you know, I can do things. And I feel like I want to get to that level. But man, I know they're not as fragile as you think. They're really not. But every time I hold a baby, I just, I don't even want to move. I'm like, uh, and maybe mine will be different, but. You'll, you'll, you'll get good at it, man. You know, really the, the only real rule is don't shake them. Like 
outside sure. of that, or drop them. Th- yeah, or drop them. But <laughs> <laughs> the shaking's the one you got to worry about. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I, there's a comedian out there, man. I can't, I can't remember his name. I feel bad, but like he's got a, he's got a joke about like, man, I, I always thought shaking baby syndrome was kind of weird. Like, who would shake a baby? And then I had one. Uh, I want to shake that baby. <laughs> it's like, I get it now. That's um, funny. Don't shake the baby. Um, yeah, they they take. I'm not gonna say they take a lot of damage, but they're practically made of rubber. So, you yeah. know, you can. I know I've seen some people like just manhandle them. You know, not yeah. like in a rough way, but you can just grab them and pick them up and like whatever. Just do what you got to do with them. You, you really can, man. Yeah, D- don't shake them and then just you know support the head. And really, after the first five or six months, that's not even a part of it anymore. Yeah, you just you know because it's just like. Yeah, yeah, they figure it out, man. Falls so, over. Yeah, the other thing much. I'm kind of pumped about that we're not doing, uh, since the guys aren't going to be there, I'm not going to be there anyway. I don't think my wife's going to do it this way anyway. But I always feared, not fear, like at a baby shower, when it's your baby shower, and it's your time to go in front of everybody and open the gifts one by one in front of everybody. Yeah. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh hold, hold it up. Hold you. it up so I can get a picture. Hold it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, I'm not opening gifts in front of everybody. I'm not even going to be there. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad I'm like leapfrogging that whole situation. Yeah. It's a, like even like I'm glad like adult birthday parties aren't really like that. Like it's not like people just bring a bunch of gifts once you get to a <laughs> right. certain age. But I imagine like being a kid and like opening a bunch of shit that I just got for me <laughs> in front of other kids who don't get anything right you know i don't know back i pre- back then i probably would have really leaned into that actually but yeah as an adult no i don't know leave it by the door we'll send a thank you funny. card speaking of you being a kid i feel like that put a little bow on the baby talk i wanted to touch base on your video that you posted about you playing in the band it's so badass oh that yeah video. <laughs> yeah well i, I- I, it popped up on my uh, like my Facebook memories, which I got to stop hanging out in there, man, because I got to tell you, 2008 to 2018 me, I want to hit that guy in the face all the time, <laughs> dude. I see things that I said on the internet, and it's not egregious things like, sure. you know, like, oh, the Confederacy had a point, you know, it's nothing like that, <laughs> but... <laughs> it's it's just like it's the typical stuff that people did on Facebook back in like 2010, like eating eggs for breakfast today. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, Shut up. No, I've Nobody definitely cares. see some things, seen some things roll around where I'm like, that should have never been typed you, and you, uploaded. I've had some that were so bad. It'd be like a post from me in 2008. That's just like just off the wall dumbness. And I'll delete it. Like no one's going to go back to 2008 <laughs> Facebook and read that. But even me, I'm like <laughs> stricken from the record. Get that I feel like out of here. our understanding of what should and should not be uploaded has kind of evolved. Like back then, the whole thing was new. And I feel like you could just kind of like throw things out there and it felt a little bit more normal than what it does now. So not only has like not only is it a different you and not only was it like a long ass time ago, but it was just a different mindset of like. You can just kind of put stuff out there and it's all good. That makes it like triple weird. I think in my mind, I may have thought it's like, oh, it's like journaling, right? But it's, it's not, (laughs) it's like journaling. And then you read the entries aloud to a bunch of people who don't give a shit. Uh, Like Nickelback isn't a very good band. (laughs) Get out of here. Like, why are you in here saying that? Get the fuck out of here. Uh, Yeah. Anyway, it popped up in my Facebook memories. A little, little uh, neurodivergent tangent there. Um, and that's yeah, the plus I, side right the, cool things pl- like that come back around it is man and i gotta say man so uh, for anyone who doesn't know back before i joined the army i played music uh in, in a couple bands but um that's what i wanted to do with my life man i very much wanted to be in a band and play shows i still to this day after everything i've done and everything that i've been able to do because of my job and and this and one punch dad and all that stuff i st- i don't think every anything has really quite touched the rush of playing music that you wrote high energy yeah. like heavy music music in front of people that you never never met before 
being on right. a stage and being in a rock band to this day one of the coolest feelings man watching a pit open up you know what i mean but anyway yeah, yeah the video popped up and i was just like yeah people probably don't know this about me i'll throw it out there just kind of a burner thing people were kind of surprised by it um yeah was kind of neat it was kind of neat to see people uh seeing that old side yep. of me people were surprised i had hair back then <laughs> no it's yeah no, it's really cool. You definitely had the moves down, bro. It, oh. it was a it was a I, pretty sick video. I was the typical like 2006 kid in a hardcore band, and I had the black swoopy hair in my face. I had sleeveless shirts. I was 120 pounds soaking wet, tight jeans, lip ring. I was it was. Disgusting. Do you remember that guitar that you were playing in that? I do. That I one? do. That was my LTD F100. Uh, that I wanted so badly because i'd grown up you know my parents didn't have a ton of money to just like give us for hobbies you know we had everything right. we needed but um so my first couple of guitars were not great guitars they were kind of beat up and cheap you know uh and so i told my parents i was like i really really want this guitar that's like it's it's a name brand that people have actually heard of it's really <laughs> mm-hmm. I th- i thought at the time really cool looking this is this i need this i need this my dad was like straight up it's either you i'll give you lunch money for the month or you can get this guitar and i went on a hunger strike dude i was straight up like (laughs) guess i'm not eating for a month yeah and i straight up did not eat any like at school lunches for a month and worth it recoup that bought my guitar and Loved that thing, man. And it was honestly, it was looking back, it was also not very expensive. I think it was maybe 150 bucks, which I'm saying, did you buy it new or did you find it used off somebody? I did. I bought it off musiciansfriend.com, which used to be, oh, yeah, before guitar centers were everywhere around the country. Uh, you you bought stuff off musiciansfriend.com, that's where you ordered yeah. stuff. And uh, I remember that, I remember that, yeah, yeah, there's some good stuff on there, but yeah, I, I, I thought the video was especially cool because, like, I've seen the pictures and I'm very aware of all that stuff in your life, but seeing it like live action is yeah. totally different. Like, yeah. seeing it actually come to life like that is really, really cool. And you know what, I just thought of because we talked about it, I want to say, on uh, episode 20 two episodes ago that was the fucking show that that dude walked behind the back line and kicked my amp off that was no that way show. yeah oh. absolutely man so that when you That's see that video cool. you can take it to heart that i'm like stifling a mild panic attack hoping that my amp <laughs> makes it through the set because it had just been launched off of the top of my cab but yeah that was that had- show Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I had a nice little crowd down there too. It was. Yeah. We, we were on a, a tour. It was like a Texas mm-hmm. tour. Um, and, and yeah, it was a bunch of kids from San Antonio and, and, uh, it was like a music fest. It was like an all day thing, but yeah, they showed up and we had some kids kind of moving around in the pit for us. It was really cool. Hell yeah. yeah. White rabbit. White rabbit, baby. Yeah, rest in peace. Apparently it's not there anymore or they renamed it yeah. or something, but what's crazy this is the last thing I'll say on this. Um, so good friend of the show, Scott from Carnifex, uh, chimed in and was talking about Carnifex who has been around since like 2005. He was like, oh, we used to play there all the time, several times a year. Yeah. In fact, they remembered it. And then the craziest part to me, one of the bands that I've loved mm, pretty much since I've enjoyed metal and heavy music, uh, the red chord <laughs> commented on my video, uh, and was like, Oh, hell yeah. The white rabbit. We remember that. And, uh, if you had told a kid in that video that one day he's going to put that video on the internet and the fucking red cord is going to have something to say anything to say about it i absolutely would have shit my pants because i everyone in that band had a red cord t-shirt we loved the red cord man so i i saw that comment and i immediately knew i was like okay that's wild to me that they chimed in um cool are they still doing stuff they are kind of like so they've been kind of on uh maybe an unofficial hiatus for several years but the red cord seems to be indicating that they are working on new music and they've been playing shows which is really cool so i think they are uh uh making a concerted effort to hit the scene again so right. which is awesome i love the red cord they got a lot of good tunes come um, on back red cord come on back bring it on back brother hey uh that's probably a good segment or a segue yeah. rather segue into a seggy 
Um, that's probably a good break point to transition to one of my favorite segments. We do it every week now. Me too. What are you? What are you crushing? What are you crushing? Insert musical bump. We're gonna get to that someday. Um, Cody, what are you crushing? Uh I actually don't have um, a show or movie. Okay, so quickly, the music. I am still listening to The Devil Wears Prada. Hell yeah. Kind of got me right now. Um, um, God dang it. What's that album? Right after The Roots. Um, It's the one I sent you. Yes, that one. Death. That one. one. It's so good. It's so good, dude. And... It's just kind of my jam right now. In the car, in the gym, I'm really enjoying it. It's got one skipper on that album. That's it. Wow. You can start that thing from the first track and just let it roll. Um, Rip. So really what I'm enjoying right now is I'm trying to get trimmed up for the summer, you know? Yeah, yeah. we'll cut. And we'll cut um, yeah, yeah. And so I've been start. I started again working out in the mornings, which I used to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I stopped. Because there for a while, waking up early just sucked ass. And I've kind of like flipped the script on that. And now I really enjoy it. Um, And so I've been going to a new gym, actually, called Texas Family Fitness. I got a little tired of that LA. It's so overcrowded. Yeah. And if you work out at LA, for it's a nice gym. Sure. If you work out there long enough, you kind of start to realize it is a notch or two above planet fitness like it's just it's it's like what you graduate to from planet fitness and this gym it's a little more like i don't know the lighting's lower and it feels a little bit more just like like gruff and tough in there if that makes sense um you know just not so light and like hey you can do it you know um anyways been trying that um, Get that working shit out in the out mornings. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you do, can it. do it. No, you yeah. can't. Do another yeah. step. Yeah, exactly. Um, so really just working out in the mornings. That's kind of been my jam right now. And I'm Ooh. still doing the every other day. And um, I kind of hate walking on a treadmill, but leading up to summer right now, I'm just alternating workout, walk in the morning, workout, walk in the morning, workout, walk in the morning. I don't have a rest day per se. I guess technically the the walking days would be the rest day, but lift every other, walk every other, and I'm about to get this six pack. Let's go. Let's yeah, go, man. I'm about to be summer ready. That's so actually, that's what I'm crushing. That's actually going to feed into mine a little bit as well because similarly we kind of finished, like I said, we finished Tiger King. We finished Love on the Spectrum. Um, we're kind of not between shows, but just not like we haven't watched anything that's like super remarkable. I yeah. kind of took a break from video games this week. I didn't play a ton of anything. Um, mm-hmm. And we're not reading right now, which I hate. I need to get back into a good book, but it's hard, man. It's hard to find a good book. But on the yeah. workout front, I had a really good workout week this week. Um, really good consistency. And I have been back. Uh, it's funny you mentioned cardio. I've been back on the bike, um, which right. is kind of something that you kind of keep me into. Um, I yeah. realized that my feet are screaming dog it's anytime i run (laughs) anytime i run especially if i try to run with like power because they say that's where you really get the benefit is like sprinting right Mm -hmm. my feet hurt man they really just don't respond well to any kind of like impact at all anymore which sucks because i like to run it's not a thing of where i don't run enough and so anytime i try to it hurts Mm -hmm. um if I could, I'd run for the rest of my life, honestly. But I really feel like my feet are begging me to stop. Um, sure. So I, I switched to your body. I did. I, I, I'm trying to listen to my body. I switched to. Uh, they have, you know, like a lot of gyms have the the spin room with all the yeah. the bike the bikes with the little kind of righty tighty lefty loosey crank in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just get on that thing, man. I've been doing my cardio on that. I try not to like slough it off, like get on there and just like pedal aimlessly. Right. I try to. Very specific songs that I've been lining up to listen to while I'm while I'm on there with very specific like, okay, let's crank it up, let's right. get off the seat, let's let's try to burn for a little bit. And I gotta say, man, it it doesn't necessarily scratch the itch like running does, 
but mm-hmm. it's working really well in a way that I'm actually getting more excited to do it yeah. uh, as part of my daily routine. Um, so yeah, man, I've been enjoying the bike. I've, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm crushing the bike for cardio lately. It's, it's I, been a good I do thing. like the bike's good. I, I use it not right now, but I, I had a period where I used it a lot for warming up. Yeah. It's really good for like before a leg day or something. Um, but definitely is like a finisher too. And I feel like since you can crank the difficulty up unlike running, you can't really change like the resistance, right? right you can just run right. faster. Um, I feel like you can crank up the resistance on this and actually like, ah, dude, the burn in your legs when it's like high crank is unlike anything else. Undefeated, man. And it really, yeah. you know, cause I kind of do it similarly. Like I've always done my cardio, just front loaded it. Uh, right. Cause I'm not a bodybuilder. Um, I like to do my cardio. It gets me in a good mode to go burn more calories with the weights. Sure. Um, that is kind of another mindset I've been in. I think I finally after 15 years of like working out, uh, you know, in a very serious way, I think I'm finally kind of releasing myself of that desire to be or look like a bodybuilder. Um, Mm -hmm. and I don't knock any, I think it's great if you want to look to bodybuilders for different exercise methods or movements or training methods or anything like that. I think it's fine. I think who better, you know what I mean? But right. I'm starting to realize it's totally okay to just be a regular in shape dude and not, yeah, you know, Arnold. That right, you know, and it's not necessarily that I like. I'm giving my pass myself a pass to work out less intensely, but it's a way to put my goals in perspective. Right, I feel like a bodybuilder. That's what they're doing. Yeah, that that is their that's their pursuit, and I've got right. Not that I'm not to say like I've got way more going on than just going to the gym, but I do have a lot of other things going on. So I right. think keeping the gym is like a foundational thing that I'm taking very seriously, but also not letting it come to the forefront in a way that it distracts from the other things that I want to do. Has right. been a, kind of a healthy realization as of late. So yeah, and it could just be even like a mindset shift because there for a little bit, my goal was like I just want to get as big and as strong as I can. And that's yeah. when I was trying, you know, deadlifting 400 pounds, didn't care about anything but squatting. And I've kind of taken a mindset, uh, a different mindset approach now to just more of like, um, more like aesthetic workouts, right? I was always, that always, I always wanted to be strong, like look strong, but actually be strong, right? Sure, yeah. And I feel like now I'm just kind of getting to where, you know, a lot of guys out there are just like, my focus is aesthetics with a secondary focus on strength. But I don't care about being able to squat 350. That doesn't matter to me. I want to be able to take my shirt off at the pool, feel confident, look good. And if I can do that, then that's good enough. You know, the the numbers in the gym don't matter as much. It's more just like, do I look good? Do I feel good? And if the answer is yes, then you're good. The do I feel good, like being really paramount to me. I think there's a lot of, there's been a lot of periods where I looked great. And I was able to get those numbers up, right? Like throwing up big deadlifts, throwing up big, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bench press and stuff. I had yeah. a lot of shoulder pain, back pain, neck yeah. pain. And it's like, I look strong as fuck, but I can't get off this couch right now. And that's, not, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, you know, no, I totally agree. Um, so yeah, my I, lower back has been a big factor in that as well. Like I've cut deadlifts completely out. Yeah. Um, I do do squats every few workouts, but it is, I've kind of gotten into like the rest pause at the bottom. You can do significantly less weight, but if you pause at the bottom of your squat for like two seconds and then go back up, I feel like you can get every, you can get all the benefit from lifting half the weight, you know? I I Uh, always think I want to do that pause at the bottom of the squat, but I'm terrified that I'm going to shit my pants. (laughs) <laughs> if you're going like 135 or 185 it's not that bad if yeah <laughs> that's hilarious i don't know man like that's just like if you lay down on the trigger too long <laughs> you know you're just mean? like telling your body that we're good to go yeah the, the door is open just lean out man you're good <laughs> that's hilarious i uh so i text you about this this morning it's or this morning it's related to my gym I, you know, I'm going to this gym. It's newer. 
Yeah. They have more racks than the current gym has, which is nice. Today was the first time that I used those racks. And tell me why the bumper plates on all their racks are in kilos. Huh? Yeah. I Dude, that. that's what I text you about this morning. So I, I have this app where it's like, tell me what to do and how much to lift and all that shit. And so I do my warm up and I pick up what says to be a 25, throw yeah. it on there. And then what says to be a five and throw it on there. I need 30 pounds on each side for what I'm doing. Right. I pick the bar up and I'm like, fuck, that feels heavy. <laughs> and I start looking around and I realize that the 20s or 25s or whatever it is, is actually 45s. Yeah. And then the fives are actually tens. So I thought I had, you know, 25 or 30 pounds on and I had 55 or 60 pounds on each side. And I had to bust out Google, like the conversion thing to like, I don't know what to put on this bar right now. You should go com- you, you, turn that gym owner in. You should go. You should go. <laughs> I them know. For being a like metric system sympathizer. This is America. Like, what is this? I mean, it took me. I do. I had to go into like math mode, Google yeah. mode, looking shit up, like trying to figure out how much to how much weight to put on here for what I need. It threw me off. But that moment that I picked the bar up the first time, I was like, that that doesn't feel like twenty five pounds. No, I hate that. <laughs> I another thing I hate, and this is kind of unrelated, but in like fighting, especially in Britain, when they announce the fighter's weight and they're like, he's eighteen stone. You ever heard that? You're like, <laughs> no. What does that even mean? You never heard that? 18 stone? No. I've Weighing never heard 60, that. Uh, usually, like, uh, I don't know. I, maybe it's just like a Britain thing, but like a lot of like fighters from the UK uh, in MMA and, and UFC, when they announce their fighting weight, they announce it by stone. And it's always like 12 or 15 <laughs> or something like that. Like, what the fuck did like? And they say it so plainly, like, everyone's like, ah, yes. Uh, many, 12 down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. That means nothing to me. It means nothing to me. Everybody sucks. Anus. 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 Did you know the world is ending on Monday? I have heard that. Tell me more. The path of totality. The path of totality. That's going to be so, 18 bands just named their band that right now. <laughs> the path of totality. It's kind of badass. So <laughs> I, we fall like in the strip where yeah. this is going to be most evident, right? The, so have the, you seen the map, like the, the total eclipse map? I think I, I think I've seen something about it to where it kind of like is like a, Upper East Coast down, yeah. kind of like to the West Coast, maybe. Yeah. Kind of curves. Yeah. And I usually don't get up for this kind of stuff when you know when it's like the moon's going to be the first thing that has been in 400 years. I don't, I just don't care. Yeah. I really, that stuff is always underwhelming, right? It can be. Yeah. Um, but apparently in the middle of the day, it's going to be pitch dark outside. For about four minutes. That's going to be kind of crazy. It's going to be kind of crazy. And what's going to be even more crazy is everybody is flocking to this path of totality who live outside it. Because it's like a once in, I don't know, a lot of years type thing, you know. Um, And if you're not in this path, like if you're outside the path, it will darken but the path of totality is where it's going to be completely dark. And so Airbnbs can't get them. Hotels really? can't find one. It's going to be it, it, it it's that, thought to be I chaos. Didn't know all that. Oh dude. It's a huge deal. Huh. And anywhere within the path, like even these tiny little towns like up in Ohio with like nothing have Like, they're just going to buckle under all the people coming there. People are flocking to this path so that they can see total darkness for, like, four minutes. And it's probably going to be chaos. Yeah. It's probably going to be absolute chaos on Monday. Um, And luckily, I live where it's going to happen. I can walk out my front door and see it, so I don't have to go anywhere. That's good. Uh, I am kind of excited, but a lot of people, you know, the conspiracy theories are rolling out, which, if I remember correctly... Oh, fun. You don't have any patience for that. I find them kind of interesting. 
I, I think, oh, like, it's always funny to see what kind of dipshit things people drum up. But yeah, like, meeting people in in life who are like believe that shit is is totally aggravating to me. Well, but some people think world's ending. Yes, on Monday, it's it. This yeah, is bummer. it. That's it. That's all. I know. Doing. I'm like, why? Why would you want to think that? I don't know. <laughs> Um, so it, it should be kind of cool to see it, but I don't know. I, I'm always kind of like curious, like if the world, like if we had like an Armageddon type meteor is going to hit earth type of shit, how would it change people's behavior? I, uh, like, I have to believe that the answer is not in a favorable way. No, I don't think everybody would band together with love and start treating each other correctly. Like, no. The world would go down. Have you? Seen, there is that movie on Netflix called "Don't Look Up" or whatever. Have you seen it? We have seen that, um, and it's it, uh, it's pretty good actually. I uh, you know yeah, which, it's kind uh, of making fun of like how we would probably handle it. You know, just like too distracted with all the bullshit in our lives to. There's a lot of stuff realize in that the movie. world is ending. There's a lot of stuff in that movie that is meant to be funny, but you're like, we would do that, and it would be really <laughs> yeah. Good really weird that we did that uh it's a great movie yeah i i don't know man I, i'm kind of getting to that age where i worry about that stuff and i hate the it end of the world i don't yeah i don't okay. want to be like one of those hysterical old dudes like you know end times are upon us but oh fucking hey man like you think about like you see things happening in the world sometimes and you're like this could be it you know what I mean? <laughs> Man, I... You're on a fast track to becoming our grandpa. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, I do... I don't know how much I like truly believe it, but the end of the world is terrifying. Yeah. And just the fact, like... Ah, this is kind of getting into a way deeper conversation, but just like what you believe and... You know, I as long as the world has been here, like you would think at some point something would happen. But then us being on this planet is the most microscopic little blip on the timeline of the earth. So then you'd also have to say we would be the most unlucky motherfuckers in the history of ever for the end of the world to happen during our lifetime, given how small of a blip that we are on the earth's timeline. Right. Yeah. Like that's like one in a billion. It feels like, well, I mean like it's just life itself. You know, the fact that we do exist and we are like sentient is a one in a billion thing. Like right. life, life occurring on a planet is a one in a billion thing. Yeah. The more I think about it, the more depressing it is. But uh, you know, I, I try not like, to get too hung up on like the meaning of life. I'm just kind of like, sure. I got what I here. got. I got what I got, I guess. Try to like, max, maximize the experience. Like, and oh man, like I think about the future quite a bit and just like in 50 years, are we going to be here? What is it going to look like? I mean, some of those things just, I don't know. And then you start hearing about like World War Three, and that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, man, the end of the world is terrifying. It really is. And then now bringing like a kid into the world gives me a whole new perspective of yeah. like, you know, I, I don't know what it's going to look like for her in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you know, like never mind me. What is she going to have to deal with? And yeah, I don't know. It gives it like a whole nother perspective to me. That's it. Cause you're, not a ton older but you're a little older than i was when i started having kids i didn't think about that stuff too much whenever my first born came along but i do think about it all the time man it's like yeah i don't want to be on planet earth when it gets hit by a meteor but i also don't want that for my kids or my grandkids because i know right i know i love my kids i know eventually when if if and when i have grandkids i'm gonna love them as much right uh i don't want that for them i don't i don't like the thought of like my children or grandchildren having to fight, like having to fight in a war. Like you think about a situation, right. a situation in Ukraine and Russia, where if you are between the ages of 18 and 40 right now, you're in a war straight up, especially if you're a man, you are, you don't have a choice. You got to go fight. 
I'm terrified to think of my kids in a situation like that. You know what I mean? Where they're literally yeah. being conscripted into the army, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's fucking over terrifying. here trying to get to 40 years old as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing that like I think about all the time, that's pretty crazy. Cyberpunk 2077. Mm -hmm. As long as you and I, you know, go in for an oil change every so often, we are on track to be alive in the year 2077. Yeah. Which is kind of bonkers to me. Like, I feel like in the 80s, they would be like, in the future. And the future year was always like 2011. <laughs> so Cyberpunk obviously was like, well, let's go a little farther than that. We don't want yeah, to, you yeah. know, 2077. I'll be 80 something. You'll be maybe 80, maybe 70. That is so wild. But yeah, we are, we are on track as long as we don't die super early. To be alive, and in I don't. I, I think it looking like that game is not that crazy. You know, there's this the, the idea, just like the exponential speed of technology. Yeah, you know, it it it's just kind of going up at this point. There, um, and what I, we're gonna have more change in the next ten years than we've had, like in the last one hundred. It's I, just things are getting so crazy. I think you're right, man. Like I, I think about like my mom. My mom's 72, 71, 72. Can't remember. Mm -hmm. Bad son. When <laughs> she was born, one kid on the block had a television in their house. The way to listen to yeah. music was a record player. There wasn't even like tape players, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And now she has an iPad. Right. You know, yeah. like with AI in it. You know. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like. <laughs> What is the differential from her being 35? Because my mom was actually 35 when I was born in 1988 to now. Pretty big, right? So what is it from me at 35 to right. me when I'm 70? You know what I mean? Like, it, I, I feel like it's something that hasn't been created. Like, it's something that we can't even fathom yet. I think stuff is traveling so fast and just progressing so exponentially that whatever our version of that looks like, like we can't even comprehend it. It hasn't been invented. It's not even a thing yet. Yeah. And we're going to look back and it could be something as crazy as like, you know, what everybody has today is a smartphone where they physically carry around. It's just something that's in your mind and you see it and you're looking back and you're like, yeah, back in the day we used to carry these things around in our pocket. I they were hold physical something things. in my hand like a loser. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it could be something like that. Or I mean, even way further than that. Um, yeah. I just think I think in ten or twenty years there's going to be things that we can't even conceive right now, yeah. And that's that in itself is kind of terrifying. Just the unknown; <laughs> it's absolutely the unknown. It really is, man. And I not to make the conversation about cyberpunk too much, but there's things in that game specifically. If you've, if, I mean, like I know you've played it, but for the listener, if you've played it, like some of it, I think is embellished. Right? They wanted it to be a cool environment, so there's like big sure. hologram fishes flying around. But there are elements of that. Like, I, I think it's very realistic to say that the cars will still drive around on tires in 2077. Yeah. Like, there's elements right. of that that are like, no, we're not flying around. But also, like, yeah, technology comes into the body at that point. You yeah. know what I mean? You mentioned, like, being able to, like, basically see your telephone's interface, like, in your mind. I, I think, and this is just a guess, this is baseless because I'm just like, this is what I've seen. This is what <clears> I think <throat> it's headed. I think the crazy like te technological innovations that have happened in the last 20 years, like iPods and iPhones and uh, smart cars and all that shit, I think we're going to see less of that. I think we're going to see more of the innovations starting to happen like in the ether, like in the computer generated world. I very much anticipate, but before I die, they're going to be able to put like a little diode on my temple and it is right. literally going to send electronic signals into my brain. And that's the video game. Like you, it literally yeah. makes you makes your brain think that you are in a situation that you're not physically in. Um, right. Have you ever seen Black Mirror? They they do that in a couple of their oh, yeah. episodes where it's literally like they're like their eyes roll back. Oh yeah. Like in the yeah. game, which to I me, I mean everything. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say to me that sounds awesome. I'm not gonna lie. No, it does, and I think in a world where everything's going digital anyway, like the idea of going away from physical devices. Makes sense, you know. Yeah. I mean, our money is now 
just a number on a screen. You know, it's no longer a physical thing. Everything's online. Um, you know, I think the physical world just kind of becoming less and less. Yeah. Makes sense. I think too, like, Have you, I think that's, oh, sorry, not to cut you off, man, but the go. last thing I'll say is I think there's merit behind that because as we roll out more and more iPhones, like I've only had an iPhone since 2015 and I've thrown five of them away. You know what I mean? Like right. we are generating a lot of trash with our technology and I'm not mm-hmm. trying to be like a tree hugger about this. I'm legitimately saying like, I think driving it in a direction where I don't need a phone or I don't need a computer. I am the computer. Yeah. I think, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm talking now. I'm, <laughs> now I'm the conspiracy theorist, man. Sorry. What were you going to say? No, I just, I think that's all, that's all interesting. What it's one thing for everything and it's in your brain. Yeah. Versus all these physical devices. Have you seen the movie called? Oh, it was made like I think in the 90s and it was made to make fun of where things are going. But nowadays it's kind of Idioc- like if you watch it today. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Have you yeah. seen that? I, You know, I've never seen it. Okay. I haven't either. Seen- well, A lot of people. Go hold- I think I've kind of avoided it. Because people do kind of hold it up as like the, the funniest thing ever. Well, not even the funniest thing, but like there are some things in there that seem to have kind of panned out in kind of a weird way, like the celebrity president type stuff. Like I, I don't know. I like Mike Judge. I, I'm a big Mike Judge fan, but yeah, I know. I just have never really been like, oh, I need to see this for how prophetic it is. But right, yeah, but, I've just heard that like a lot of it. Like you watch it today, and you're like, what? This doesn't feel that outla- that outlandish. Yeah. But the whole idea behind it was let's make something that's so ridiculous. It'll never happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. I need to see it. Like it, it's it's one of those things where like it's one of those like movies that I feel like you probably need to swing swing around and hit at some point. Yeah. Um but yeah, I I, I don't know, man. Like times get crazier and crazier. It's an election year. It does not feel like an election year. I have a feeling right. the last quarter of this 2024 season is about to go wild. I think, <laughs> yeah, based on how the last when the last time Papa Joe and Donnie T met up for a match, it was wild. Like there was three months yeah. of utter just craziness, and yeah. I think it's probably on track to either be a repeat or be even crazier. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to totally be agree. Year. What are your thoughts on the Israel strike? Just what? kidding. <laughs> Cut that. I don't give a shit. Not that I don't give a shit. I don't have any thoughts on that. <laughs> Break. All right. Let's do a couple write-ins. Uh, if you're not tracking, head down to our description for the episode. You'll see a link to our Discord. Hop in our Discord. In that Discord is a channel called Questions for Podcast. Hop in there. You can write us anything you want. Ask us a question. Start a conversation. Let us know your heart's desire. As Cody likes to say, you might get red. You might get red. Sorry, I didn't tee that up. But you you, you caught what I was throwing down. No, I mean, we're, we're on the same page. That's your line. I didn't want to steal your line. So, Thank you. You Thanks. might get red. Um, got four here today. We'll start with the first one, uh, comes to us, uh, from, uh, previous writer, Edward Pello. Welcome back, Edward. Um, what historical person do you simp for? Not, not do you favor, <laughs> not who do you like, not whose policies you admire. What historical person do you simp for, Cody? Oh my gosh. Ah. Uh historical person what does that mean <laughs> i so i i have one that just like popped in my mind go and ahead i, I don't mean well i don't know if it obeys the rule or not because i'm fairly certain this person is still living um bo jackson got to be one of the most interesting athletes out there man this dude I, I like I don't know I ended up on Bo Jackson TikTok this week and so I like huh. three or four times throughout the week I watched 
uh, uh, compilations of this dude. Just most of it was baseball. The mm-hmm. dude was a nuke machine, dude. He just looked powerful. Like if you like, if you look at his legs, it mm-hmm. just lo- he just looked like one of the most powerful beings on the planet Earth. This dude was straight muscle, understood like had just a knack for every sport he played. Really fun watching him play baseball. But I absolutely love Bo Jackson. I love watching Bo Jackson footage. Huh. Even like when he'd strike out, like he would take a wood bat and break it over his quad, like it was <laughs> spaghetti going oh into the God. pot. Man, he was a monster. <coughs> That's crazy. Okay, well, I have to give Bo Jackson a little bit of. And I attention. think he's still alive, so I don't know that necessarily. I will say he's probably what I consider to be a legacy athlete if he's still alive, but historical, sure. or not, that's my choice. Okay. Um, one that came to mind, and I know that we're both big fans. We might have even talked about him on the show, but Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, man. is awesome. I know we both really, really like him. Absolutely. That, um three part documentary or whatever that came out about him. Like yeah. I've always liked him, but that kind of took him to like a new level. Um the other one I will say, and he's not alive, so this one maybe does meet the criteria. I've always really liked Kobe. I feel okay. like Kobe is just fucking animal dude his highlights are crazy and hearing how he just had like mamba mentality right it was just a killer mindset and some of the stories about like how when he and his family would go on vacation and he would rent a gym out and still be in the gym at 4 30 a.m practicing his craft on vacation because he felt like he couldn't afford to slip for one day is just something that I cannot relate to. Um, but the fact that people like that like actually exist, have that sort of just machine mindset. Yeah. Um, there's this one quick story LeBron was telling it one time, but he said it was like they had been out at the bars all night, stayed up all night, and they were coming back to their hotel at like 4 a.m. or whatever, and they're, you know, heading up the elevator. And when it opens, there's Kobe with all his stuff heading out to go practice at the gym at like 4 a.m. when everybody's coming back from the bar. Just a machine, dude. Absolute machine. Um, And I don't know, man. I always just thought he was fucking badass. Yeah, absolutely, man. And his off-court, like if you watch how he he was in like interviews and stuff, he seems super real. Like he definitely, like he knew he was great, but he also knew he was a man. Like he was just a dude. So I I think the most recent clip I saw of Mamba was – he was doing a press conference and a kid that he played high school basketball was in the front row in the press conference. And he like completely like the game or like the post game, all that stuff went out the window and he was just talking to this dude. He was like, man, it's good to see you. man. You had a mean jump shot back in the day or whatever. And it was, it was really cool to see, uh, see him like just kind of let his guard down like that. That is cool. And the fact that he played against Michael Jordan and LeBron, Played in both eras, kind of cool. He transcends both of those players. So, um, yeah, I'll go Kobe for the random yeah. one. It's a good choice. Kind of surprising we went pretty much all athletes. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know much else. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, being in the military, I think someone would probably anticipate that I would pick like a general or something. But no, generals are boring. There got to be gen- Yeah, no, like Patton or whatever. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be one of the one of the least interesting people to me. I don't know. I anyway. That's just what I think. Uh, thanks, Edward Pello. Great question, Fozello. Fozello, my man, writing back. Uh, what historical event would you change? That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, because for every answer, you're gonna have a non-answer for something else. Um, historical <laughs> event. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. Not, I feel like the easy ones are going to be like, I would go prevent the Holocaust or I would go prevent 9-11. But <laughs> right. yeah. I'm trying to think of stuff that maybe not. I'm not trying to be selfish, but just like stuff that directly affects me. But it's also like a like it's like. I don't know. I, like I, I would go back and not dye my hair so much. I don't know. <laughs> you would go back and make today a good day. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would start at 
7 a.m. 11 today. o'clock today. <laughs> take a fresh take a fresh swing at Friday, 24 <laughs> April or 5 April, whatever day it is. Oh my gosh! I mean, if you had a genie told you you can redo any moment in history at all, and you said, "Take me back to 10 a.m. this morning," I'm redoing this Friday. <laughs> Let me get one more shot, baby. <laughs> So really that's it all right uh, yep. i don't know man that's... like i oh brother Ugh. i don't know man i really don't yeah like i feel like i'm reaching like i just don't i feel like time is something you, you don't fuck with so it's, <laughs> yeah it's, it just seems like Everything. a waste not that this isn't a good question but it just kind of seems like a wasted effort of thought resources to try to be like what would i change if i could do if i could go back the butterfly effect man you don't know like you don't know what changing one little thing how drastically that's going to change everything that's absolutely true man i think about that all the time for my own personal life because i'm like you know talking about you know like being in bands and stuff i'm like man if i had just stuck it out if i had just done this or you know hung in there a little longer i could be a famous musician now or something like that and i'm like yeah but then nothing about my life that i love right now would be a part of it you know my kids wouldn't exist so yeah you know would have drastically changed the trajectory of my life so i'll let the alternate universe version of myself enjoy all that stuff i like what i got the hard point's gonna leave it alone yeah, we're going to we're going to leave that one lie, I think. <laughs> but but it is a good question, but it made me it reminded me that I'm kind of just like there is a level of acceptance that I try to exercise sure. about shit that has happened. Even though some of that stuff I now what I will say, I would be most happy to go back in time and punish people who caused bad historical things to happen. 100%. Like if you told me like yeah. go punch you know, Hitler in the jaw. <laughs> Sign me up, straight up, or whatever, or worse, right? I, I I could get down with, but to change something that happened, I just don't. I don't know that I. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Final hard to answer. Say. Hard point's gonna leave that one. <clears throat> Thank you, Fazello. Very very thoughtful. Thanks, question. Fazello. <clears throat> uh, last one here, from Cool Boy Thirty Ten. Once again. Uh, what was your first car? Mine was a Ford Ranger, a 2000 Ford Ranger. Ford and, Ranger. uh, yeah, had kind of a love hate relationship with that truck. It was <laughs> nice. I was you know, actually, I'm not going to say it was nice. That's not the word to describe it. <laughs> it ran. It got me from point A to point V point B and Perhaps the most important part, it was given to me. I didn't have to buy my first car. Sure. I did not have a car when I turned 16. Like when I turned 16, I was basically given a vehicle and it wasn't super nice and it wasn't super awesome, but it was mine, Maybe. you know, and I was yeah. 16 and I could motherfucking drive. That's right. And it was just, man, good times with that truck. I had Absolutely. a lot of fun with it. I think I vaguely remember this. Was it gray? It was blue, like, like cowboy blue blue navy okay. blue yeah ford fucking ranger man love it yeah man did all kinds of things with that <laughs> that's a getting in trouble truck right there man it really is <laughs> it really is my first car You're... was a black pontiac it was a 1994 pontiac grand prix and it was a pretty cool little car it was had troubles <laughs> had a lot of troubles but it had a cool head unit in it and so i could listen to cds Back in the oh, day, yeah. I was a big fan of that. But yeah, I used to ride around in my uh, my black Pontiac Grand Prix. And I was I started the school year at a weird time, so I was one of the older kids in my grade. Mm-hmm. So my sophomore year, everyone else is walking to school like a bunch of losers. <laughs> and here come, I'm going to make a tough car sound. It didn't make this sound at all, but here comes me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was I was old for my grade too. A birthday in November, so I was like one of what school year starts in August. Know, August, yeah, yeah. Uh, three months into sophomore year, I had my license and had a car, so that was pretty sweet. Yeah, I think I rode in that thing 
Is that what you had when we went and saw Eagle Eye and you went and picked me up like way back in the day? No, nah, I remember that. Man, Eagle Eye. Holy shit. Um, I know. It was a black car you picked me up in. It was. I had it from the time I was 16. And I think I got rid of it when I was 19. I sold it okay. to somebody for like $300 straight up. <laughs> um, didn't run great, but it ran. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, the head unit also got stolen out of it. Someone broke oh, into it and awesome. took the head unit. And they took the whole thing, too. So I had no way to listen to music. Thanks, asshole. Yeah, thanks, asshole. Uh, hey, that's probably going to do it for this week. I want to say thank you again for tuning in. Um, we really enjoyed the live episodes the last couple weeks. Um, we're definitely looking at having some more guests on in the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. April's going to be a wild month for uh, for me. Uh, we're, we're, we're moving, so... There may be some kind of transient episodes. We're probably going to just pre-record a lot, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of good things come in the summer. Cody's having a baby in June. Yeah. Oh, man. So <laughs> wow. uh, it's going to be going to be an uh, interesting <clears throat> next couple of couple weeks for sure. But we're going to keep the heat up, keep it coming. We're going to weather it the best we can. Keep pumping out the good content. Keep it, keep it cranking, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, but Hey, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, thank you for listening. Make sure if you enjoyed watching, like subscribe, if you enjoyed listening, leave a review, give us a little star rating. It does great do does it. wonders for us. We appreciate do it. it. Do it now. I want to wish you all Baja blessings upon your Many. little heads. <laughs> thank you for listening to the hard point. <laughs> See you next week. See ya.